you, Jesus, that you called us into your marvelous light. We thank you that you marked our lives for your use. Oh, come on, church, right there where you are. Can you begin to thank the Lord for saving you? Bless his name. Tell him, God, I am available for your use. I am available to be your hands and your feet. Hallelujah. You 
use our lives that we would serve him for the rest of our days God hallelujah we were made for your pleasure Lord we were made to bring your pleasure we were made to glorify your name hallelujah can we talk to him this morning church
there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those you around me holy there is no Let's just lift up a shout, a praise and a clap offering to the Lord right now. Because <laughs> he's worthy. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you and we commit this service into your hand right now. In Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Church, here's some announcements. Hi, church. So glad you made it, whether you're joining us online or in person. Here are some announcements. We are a church that loves to pray, and we have multiple prayer meetings throughout the week. Here's how you can get involved. On Wednesday nights, we have corporate prayer together from 7 to 8 p.m. Every Friday, we get together with the rest of the churches in our region for regional prayer. Come and join us from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. This Saturday from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m., we have women's prayer. All of our weekly prayer meetings take place live via Zoom. To log in, head over to vomanchester.org.uk for all the Zoom ideas. Our services are online every Sunday at 10 a.m. on Facebook and YouTube. Why not invite a friend or family to come and join you? Or go ahead and share the link for the online service. There's a lot going on here at Victory Outreach, so to stay in the loop and keep updated with anything you may have missed, head over to our website, vomanchester.org.uk. It wasn't that a powerful time in worship. Amen. One more time. Let's make some noise for Jesus. Amen. 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 Just before we go on with the service today, how many know what day it is today? I know it's Sunday. I know you were just saying that, obviously. I know it's Sunday. We're here in church. But how many know it's Victory Outreach Church Picnic today? Amen. How many people have brought their sandwiches, brought your lunch, ready to bring and share as we go over to Buell Hall Park today where we're going to have some fun, some games. The weather's looking like it's going to stay dry, but how many know that we're believing for the sunshine, amen, because the Lord wants us to have fun, and that's directly after the service today. There should be a flyer on the screen that you should be able to see all the details, but right now, I just want us to go into a special video. Please turn your attention to the screens. We're in Run for Hope mode 2021 and uh, so many people are doing so many different things. You're going to see a little bit more as we move on. But me and Ronnie, we are we are walking for hope, 100 kilometres. So feel free to sponsor us. But you really just need to think about what you do for love. There's anything, but get involved. Just really important. We want to plant more churches and we want to reach people. That's it. We want to reach people and it, it does take finances. So get involved. Hi family, this is Ken and Trish and we are doing the Top of My event in Yorkshire this Saturday the 31st of July and it's in aid of Run For Hope. Hi, my name is Naomi Heenan and for Run For Hope I'm doing the 5k inflatable race. Please sponsor me as I do this to make a difference in my generation. Hello, my name is Dylan Farrell and for Run For Hope, I'll be doing an inflatable 5K and all funds from this event will be going to help plant churches all around the world to help the broken and hurting people come into Christ and have a better life with God. That was a couple of examples of what people are doing. Uh, you just choose, but we really, really, as a church, want to raise money. And I know that every single person can do something. So let's get involved.
Amen. Doesn't that look amazing, some of the stuff that's happening for Run for Hope? And I just want us just to acknowledge Ken and his wife there who actually done it yesterday. Tough mother for Run for Hope. They've done that between 10 and 12 miles. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause for Ken and Trish. They're out there in the car park getting the kids gang ready. But this Run for Hope coming up and just, there's so much stuff happening. But what do, how are you going to get involved? How are you going to be able to take part? Because Run for Hope is a, an event we do once a year for our United We Can, which is our mission fund. Because how many know that we want to see churches planted all over the UK region, amen? And that takes me, it takes you being faithful. And I was just before we get into the giving, just when I saw my daughter there, I actually saw the importance in the, how Run for Hope works. In 2004, I went through Victory Outreach Men's Home in London because of Run for Hope. There could be a church planted there in London. And fast forward it now into 2021, my daughter's running for Run for Hope because of a church that was planted from Run for Hope. Now she's running for her generation to make a difference. So you might, everyone can get involved. No matter, just do what you love to do. It could be eating, it could be dancing, it could be singing. Whatever you love to do, let's do it together and let's make a difference in our generation. Amen. And right now, we're just going to get into a time of giving. And in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, it's a scripture that I was taught very early in my Christian walk about giving. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all that you do, and he will show you which path to take. As we get ready to give of our tithe and our offering this morning, how many times have we leaned on our own understanding? How many times have we tried to work it out? How many times have we even, let's take a, maybe a holiday from giving? Because how many know that God never takes a holiday of blessing? God's always providing, God's always taking care, but sometimes we can lean on our own understanding. But the first point, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, because giving's not about how much you give, but giving's about the condition of your heart. Is it a heart that says, I trust Jesus? Is it a heart that says, I'm going to put him first? Is it a heart that says, you know what, I want to invest? Because when you invest, you see the fruit of your investment. We see it here in Manchester that we've been able to do so much all the way through pandemic. And that's because of people's faithfulness, especially in the area of their giving. And even look at the, the pledge we took up. We put, there was a pledge for over 35. We pledged 30,000 pounds, but God's people raised 35,000 pounds. That's right. You have to get excited. about. Remember, this was during a pandemic. This is about the faithfulness of God's people and the faithfulness of God. And even this morning, when I was looking at this morning, there is over £31,000 came in in cash. That's right, paper came into the bank account, over £31,000. So God's people have been faithful. Why? Because they trust in the Lord with all their heart. See, he says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. And I want to encourage us this morning, especially in the area of giving, let's be faithful. Let's continue to put Jesus first. Let's trust in him and watch what God can do. And in a minute, there's going to be a video on ways that you can give this morning. But I just really want to encourage us, and I love to read this scripture again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Let's pray this morning. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, what a privilege what an honor that we can give this morning. We ask you to bless the tithe, the offering, the united we can. Let it be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. And in the mighty name of Jesus, and everyone says, Amen. God bless you as you give this morning. Hey church, thank you for your faithful giving. Here's a few ways you can give. You can give by visiting our website, vomanchester.org.uk forward slash give and hit the giving option. Click the donate button to give using your debit card.
can also pay by bank transfer. Details will be on your screen now. The first details are for your types and offering and please note the second of the United We Can. You can also access the giving page using the QR code that's on your screen. Use your mobile device to scan this. For our international givers, please use the IBAN and BIC number. And don't forget Pledge 2021. To sign up or to redeem your pledge, head over to our website viamanchester.org.uk forward slash pledge. Hello everyone, it's great to be with you today and uh, it's a little bit different today, it's going to be a little bit of a different sermon today because we're not going to be talking about going out and taking the world because how many of you know we want to take the world for Jesus and uh, we do that together, we do that in harmony, we do that with other people but um, today we're going to be talking about something a little bit more, more in line with the season that we're in. So I want you to help me to pray, and then we're going to get into things today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, O God, for your anointing. And I pray that your anointing would be upon this message. Father, I pray that you would anoint me, because I need it to be able to speak in a way that is going to be understandable, but also, God, would be transformational for people. Lord, I never want to come and preach a message that is dry and dusty and just something that is taken off the shelf and pre-packaged and pre-formed, but let it be fresh. And Lord, I pray that people will be able to gather it to themselves. And Lord God, most of all, may we gather you to ourselves and know that we're being gathered by you into a great army, a great movement, God, that is going to do great things in this city, in this nation, in this generation. So Holy Spirit, bless us today. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Mark's Gospel, chapter 6. And I'm speaking a message today that I've titled The Pit Stop. The Pit Stop. Now, for some of you, that means the chicken shop. For some of you, that means the chip shop. Um, you know, you go in for a little pit stop. I don't know if you've ever watched any Formula One racing. I'm not really into it myself. I'm not a petrol head, but I know some people love it, especially men. But you know, you know the scenario, right? They're, they're, they're off, they're, they're, they're racing, but they're racing for a long way. And you can't race on the same tires with the same tank of fuel for the whole race. And so what they do is they time it so that there will come a time when they will do a pit stop and they'll come into a place and there'll be a little bit of a change of stuff they'll put on some new tires they'll get some new fuel and you see them do it and they're, they're really good at it I don't know if you've ever seen any of the fails where they don't put the wheel on properly and they drive off with three wheels or or they keep the holes in for the fuel and there's fuel going everywhere but generally they come in they get sorted out and then they go back on their race that's what I want to talk about today I want to talk about us and how we as people 
pit stop on the journey that we're on. Mark chapter 6, verse 30 It says, the apostles returned to Jesus from their ministry tour and told him all they had done and taught. Then Jesus said, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. Everyone say rest. Rest. Now say say it. I I can't hear you online. No, you, you even... People even said it in here. They, I think they must be watching online even now. But he said, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. So they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. We all need rest. And... Uh, from time to time, we need it more, more often. I mean, if you know what I'm talking about. Rest is good. Rest is a real weapon. And Jesus utilized it several times with his disciples. Sometimes we have the, the thinking that Jesus was all about his father's business and it was all about let's go, let's go, let's go. And it was. It was very focused. It was very, very powerful, very dynamic, but don't forget, you can't just keep going, 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 going on the same tires with the same tank of fuel. And Jesus utilized this a lot. In fact, as someone that kept and actually fulfilled the whole of the Jewish law system, Jesus would have rested one day in every week. He Sabbathed one day in every week. He would put aside all of the stuff that he was doing and devote himself to rest. The Old Testament scholar and theologian, Walter Brueggemann, said that Sabbath is the celebration of life beyond and outside productivity. And I think that over the past pandemic season, this concept of rest has got a little bit twisted. I think it always has been a little bit twisted in our Western societies, but Even in churches, it can get twisted. But I think over this pandemic season, it's got even more twisted and confused. Can anyone help me out and say they agree with me by saying amen? Because I don't know if if, if you're the same as me, but pressure and stress really ramped up to different levels in this pandemic season. Work literally invaded our homes, right? For those people that were fortunate enough to still have jobs, we went from office work or, or out, you know, in, in, in wherever it was, to working from home or online. Many people were furloughed, which meant they were paid for doing nothing. But how I many of you know that didn't work out well for a lot of people because when the furlough stopped, so did their job. But for those of us that had the capacity to work from home, work literally came home with us. I don't know about you, but before, you know, in the old school days, it was you wake up in the morning, or if you'd like me, you drag yourself up in the morning, and you get ready for work, and then you'd travel to work, and then you'd go to work, you'd work, and then you'd come home from work, and your work would be left at the office, or at the building, or wherever it was. But how many of you know, with the pandemic, and with Zoom, and Teams, and all that stuff, there was no cut off. The part that, the, you know... You'd work for eight hours a day and you maybe travel for two. But how many of you know, for some people, work became 10 hours a day? Oh, help me out. Is anyone helping me out right now and agreeing with this? Or am I just talking about my own experiences? Because the time that you were traveling, now your boss wants you to work. Well, you're just sitting in your house. Do this email. Get on this Zoom. We've got an extra meeting. And things started to really, really ramp up in terms of work. I don't know about you, apart from the first couple of weeks of the lockdown, the first lockdown, when everything was like, man, who knows what's going to happen? The sun was out. We had a beautiful summer. Do you remember this? Am I talking to people that are still remembering stuff? First couple of weeks, it was, man, who knows what's going to happen? God is, is, is yours, right? 
I'm looking outside for zombie brain eating people, you know what I mean, to, to come. I'm looking for Will Smith and a dog. Who knew what was going to happen, right? The pandemic. Ah! So you're locked down, you're in your house, things change. I remember sitting out in the garden. And how many of you know that, that, that our, our lifestyle changed a little bit, our rhythm changed? Pandemic was locked down. In this country, we were locked down. In Manchester, Salford and Bolton, where I live, we've been locked down forever. In fact, in the new Lord of the Rings film, they've actually taken Mordor out and put Bolton and Salford in as the place where the Dark Lord lives. But I remember going to Puerto Bacchiado and sitting out in the sun. And it was lovely for a couple of weeks. It was all different. You unplugged. How many of you know, then after that, Zoom hit the room. And as a church, we had to keep going. You know, there are lots of churches that have sadly not restarted because of, of various different things. We kept going through, through the midst of the pandemic. We, we met with people on Zoom. We met with people on Teams. We met with people online. We phoned people. We got WhatsApp groups. We did all sorts of stuff. And before you knew it, my life became busier than ever because everyone wanted to Zoom, call, talk, speak, and I couldn't escape. The only way I could escape was to say my Wi-Fi was down. Before it was, oh, I'm stuck in traffic. Now it's like the Wi-Fi's gone. You learn to adapt. How many of you know what I'm talking about? But all of these things got stressful all day, every day. And rest started to become a little bit more blurry. I know people that work from home have found themselves working longer hours, struggling to cut off. What's the cutoff point now? And then there's the pressure, the financial pressure to work. Because you still got bills to pay, right? I mean, if you know, that's the name of the demon that attacks Christian finances. Bill. That's his name. And it's still bills to pay. There's a mortgage to pay. There's rent to pay. There's food. I don't know about you, but my food bill kind of doubled. And it weren't because we were buying more. I'm sure they crept some of the prices up. Or it might be that we were just going there every day because that was the only way, that was the only place we could go. I mean, if you know the day out was, where are you going? Oh, I'm going out to Asda. Oh, nice one. All dressed up. <laughs> After shave. <laughs> But there's financial pressure. So you have to keep grinding, keep grinding and keep grinding. And it all got twisted. I think it's going to work its way out a little bit as society starts to, you know, rebound from the pandemic. But still there are some patterns and there are some habits that have got into people that I believe that we need to start to, to look at. And I think we need to relearn how to rest and truly rest in the way that God intends us to rest, physically and spiritually. So we want to look at it in two ways. Are you ready? So there's two ways I want to look at this rest thing today. The first, the first bit that we're going to look at is the permission to rest. The permission to rest. And then we want to look at the patterns of rest. So first of all, it's really important to understand, and I want you to take this to heart, that God gives you permission to rest. Say amen. amen. Say I received that permission. God gives you permission to rest. Just look at our opening scripture. We see Jesus responding to his disciples as they've returned from a ministry trip. They've been out serving. They've been out praying for the sick. They've been out taking the kingdom of God and the message of the kingdom everywhere they went. And I, I don't know about you, but that is tiring stuff. It's wearing, it's draining spiritually and emotionally and physically. And they came back from the trip and instead of Jesus saying, right, let's go again. Come on. And like Pharaoh's overseer, he said, what did he say? He said, come on, man, let's go and rest now. You've done good. Let's take some time out to rest. He gave them permission to rest. And you have to understand that you have permission to rest. But watch what he says. 
He says, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. See, the key here is that Jesus encourages them to separate themselves from doing for a time so that they can remember what it means to be for a time. In all of our lives, there's a lot of doing. How many of you know we're not human doings? We're human beings. But when we're doing all the time and we're not giving time to be, things get out of whack. And we see that in society now where people have forgotten how to do this properly. Resting and getting away from doing is super healthy, man. Because if you want to serve God, how many of you want to serve God in some way, shape or form? Then your ministry, which everyone, everyone who's a Christian, who's a disciple, there's no separation between a convert and a disciple. Well, I'm a convert, but I'm not a disciple. I ain't decided to be a disciple. Then you're not even really converted, probably. As soon as you get saved, you become a disciple. You start learning about how to be saved, right? And then every one of us is called to minister in some way, shape, or form. And ministry literally means, in its original context, to serve. So you could be serving on the car park. You could be serving on the back, in, in the back. You could be serving on media. You could be serving as an usher. You could be serving in worship. You could be serving in the kids gang, in the youth. You could be serving in many different ways, in the grocery. You could be serving in the homes, but let's be serving. You could be serving in prayer. We have intercessory teams in this church that you don't even see their faces. But how many of you know, how many of you know God and the devil know their names? Because they're interceding and serving in that. But the thing is this, all of our service for God, all of our doing is an overflow of our being. So if you're not doing very good, it's probably because there's something not very good in your being that's going on. And that's where we need to learn how to rest. There's something that you probably hear a lot about called mindfulness. Mindfulness. It's this concept out there called mindfulness. And I, I was reading up on it, and basically it's the basic human ability to be fully present. That was, the, that was the, the description. The basic human necessity to be fully present. And I don't know about you, but if we're not fully present, if we're tired, if we're overwhelmed, if we're burdened by stuff, and we haven't rested, and our being is wrong, you're not going to be fully present in a situation. For example, if I'm tired and I'm trying to preach, I'm really trying to get God, the, the anointing of God, to come and to move, and, 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 and he does. And in that moment, I am fully present. I've preached when I've been sick. I've preached when I've been in pain. The other week, I could barely walk from back pain when I had a back problem. But the anointing of God, when I'm resting in him, I could be fully present. But when was the last time you were fully present? When was the last time you were fully present in your relationship with your kids, with your family, with your friends? Or were, was your mind distracted, fractured, overwhelmed, overcome and overtaken with other stuff? When you're tired and you're worn out, you're going to be scattered, you're going to be fragmented and you're going to be miserable. How many of you know, how many of you are miserable when you're tired? Right? You are grumpy when you're tired. Amen? You wake up in the morning and you're like, what dwarf am I going to be today? Dopey? <laughs> you're not sleepy no more. Sneezy? Maybe. Take a test. Amen? Or grumpy. And when you're tired, you just get grumpy, man. Worn out. But rest is about knowing that life is not just about results or productivity. It's not just about getting stuff or doing stuff. Rest, when you understand it, starts to include your inner transformation and your inner peace. And when you've got that, that flows out into better relationships and better everything. Are you, are you still with me? And one thing I've come to understand is that a rested mind and body is the best weapon against the challenges that life brings. And I don't know about you, but life is bringing challenges all the time. You know, who, who knew last, last February we were going to go into, or the February before 2020, we were going to go into a worldwide pandemic. Challenges came from everywhere. 
And those that entered that place tired, worn and weary, they struggled really badly. But the rested ones, the ones that knew how to be and how to renew and restore, they were the ones that were able to face that challenge a lot more successfully. And you're going to see that all the way. And what you'll find is that when you're not rested, when you're tired, people tend to quit. How many of you have exercised in this past season? Come on, I know some of you, when you were locked down, you went out buying Lycra, all sorts of stupid stuff that, you know, you thought that you were going to look, look like the rest of the runners in. <laughs> Amen. Bikes and all the rest of it, right? People were doing it and they were exercising. But there gets a point when you get tired, you just want to quit. Oh, you've got to help me out. You seem very tired today. And, and when you're like this, you tire me. Are you with me? You're like spiritual vampires, man. It just sucks the energy right out of me, unless you can help me out. Give me an amen. amen. But when, you re when you're rested, you can, you can get into it. But when you're tired, you want to quit. And the thing is, when people are tired, they tend to quit. I saw this thing by Banksy, the artist. You know the artist? And he painted, painted this thing on a wall. And he said, if you get tired, learn to rest, not to quit. Learn to rest, not to quit. If you're running a 5K for hope and 4K into it, you're tired. If you quit, you ain't going to get your sponsorship money. By all means, take a rest and then finish the race. Amen? These, these are things that you have permission to do. You have permission to rest because you don't have permission to quit. So let's look at, look at the patterns of rest. I think this is very important. Because when we understand some of these different aspects, it will help us to be able to utilize this a lot, more, a lot easier. Number one, we all rest differently, and that's okay. I have this conversation with my wife all the time, and she says that she rests differently. So she's tired, I'm tired, I'm aching. And the next thing, she'll be out mowing the lawn. <laughs> Then she'll be cleaning up. Then she'll be putting stuff away. Then she'll be sorting through all my wardrobe and throwing things out that I still want. <laughs> right? And I'm saying to her, you said you were tired. Yeah, well, I'll rest differently. Right? When I'm tired, I'm just doing nothing. <laughs> Have I got any friends out there? When I'm tired, I'm doing nothing. Some people, when they're tired, they start doing other stuff. And it's okay because rest is not just about doing nothing. There's different ways that we rest. Some people want to lay, lay on a beach and boil in the sun. I get that. Amen? I get that. I saw, I saw a guy boiled in the sun. It looked like he had an Arsenal shirt on. It was all red with little white bits. That's okay if that's what you want to do. I love it. I love, getting, I love getting in the sun. I have a good tan. I tan well. Amen. I go brown. But how many of you know, I, feel, I think it's unfair that I have to spend money to go brown. I think it's unfair. But I love it. But we can't go anywhere at the moment. I get it. Some people want to rest and they want to travel and see new things. We ask people, where are you going on vacation? Where are you going on holiday? Some people, I'm going on this beach. I'm going to be on the beach. Some people are like, I want to see ancient ruins. Right? It's okay. However you want to rest is okay. Some people just want to switch off from work. They'll do anything. They just don't want to go to work. It's okay. But however you do it, you've got to make time to rest. Rest doesn't just happen. You have to make time to rest. Work is important, but rest is important, and you have to give equal attention to both. But it's also important to know that you need different types of rest, and sometimes people rest wrong. How many of you have ever rested by doing nothing, and you're still tired at the end of it? Right? Because maybe you're resting wrong. There's seven types of rest that humans need, apparently. There's physical rest, there's mental rest, social rest, creative rest, 
Emotional rest, sensory rest, and spiritual rest. I'm going to break these down for you a little bit. So I want you to see that maybe you might have been resting wrongly. That's why you're still tired. For example, physical rest is for when your body is tired. Sometimes your body is tired. If you're falling asleep halfway through the day, if, you, if your body is tired, if you're just feeling tired all the time, then go to sleep. Sleep is a weapon. You need seven or eight hours sleep a night. Don't get fall into that trap of thinking that you are like, you know, super worker or something. You know what I mean? You're like superhuman. I, I could get by on four hours sleep. Yeah, but you've got bags under your eyes that you could, you know, people could shop with. Come on now, you're grumpy all the time. I think you need more than four hours of sleep a night. <laughs> Man, the people have said to me, Pastor, I could exist on four hours of sleep. Yeah, no wonder you're in the flesh. Just get some sleep. If your body's tired, rest your body. Amen? I mean, this seems quite, you know, quite obvious. But sometimes rest is not just physical. What about mental rest? How many of you ever struggled to concentrate? You've had brain fog. How many of you ever felt like your brain is like mush? <sighs> Most of you in here right now, hallelujah. <laughs> Some of you online as well, you can't concentrate. It might be that you're mentally overworked. So if you're mentally overworked, what you've got to do is you've got to detach from what it is that you're just doing constantly and go and do something else. And I'll tell you this, I'll tell you what can help with mental rest is not physical rest. When you're mentally tired, it helps to actually work your physical body. Exercise is good to give you mental rest. Some people are not catching that right now. They're like, I don't believe you. I'm serious. If you've got brain fog, if you can't concentrate, it's because your mind is constantly going. Duh, 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 duh. So what you've got to do is you've got to get off your mind and the best way to do it is get on your body. Go for a run. Go for a walk. Do a workout. Do some stretching. Do some yoga. Just don't get into all the funky yoga stuff. But do the stretching by all means. Stretching your body is cool. Don't get into all the chakra business. <laughs> Amen. But do something physical to help your mental rest. And then social rest. Sometimes you're not physically tired and you're not necessarily mentally tired. You are socially tired. I'm an introvert by nature. Can the introverts amongst us unite? Amen. Most of them are at home in their own rooms right now. Praise the Lord. Introverts... It's nothing to do with personality. People have said to me, Pastor Paul, you don't sound like an introvert. You're very accommodating. You're very good at you know, talking to people. You have a laugh. You have fun. It's not, nothing to do with personality or the ability to survive in social settings. It's about what drains your energy, what gives you energy. For introverts, social settings drain their energy. I mean, if you know what I'm talking about. Huh? For me, I get to a point where I'm in a social setting and I'm good, I'm okay. I'm not very good with small talk. I want to get past the, 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 the protocol and get straight to the altar call. Are you with me? I want to talk about something deep and meaningful. If you start talking about random stuff, I'm going to switch off. Because that's just me. I'm sorry. And if you've ever come across me like that, that's probably why. It's not personal. I just find small talk boring. But then what happens is, I start looking at people after a while in social settings as spiritual vampires. I've already said that. They are energy sucking beasts. They're coming to suck all the energy out of my life. Right? Extroverts are different. Extroverts thrive on people. My nickname for my wife is Skittles. Because the more people she's around, it's like a child that is eating bags of Skittles. They get more and more energy. <laughs> We went to a wedding the other day and uh, Vicky was the last one to leave. It was raining. There was a gale outside. We were outside this place. And she was the last one to leave. And she's like, where are we going next? Where are we going next? <laughs> Me, I was like, I've spoke to about five people. I need to go home, man. 
But socially, we have to rest. Sometimes you need to just get alone. Even introvert, even extroverts need to do that. Just get alone and just be. Because when you're constantly in social settings, it can be very, very, very draining. Is anyone with me still? Or if you don't want to get alone, get with, get, just get with someone who really gets you. That you don't have to do all of the social stuff. You can just be yourself. That will give you a certain amount of rest. Then there's creative rest. Whether you know it or not, you're creating stuff. You're creating atmospheres. You're creating solutions to problems. You're creating topics of conversation with people in all these different areas. And sometimes you can get creatively tired. And when that happens, when you're creatively tired and you can't come up with the solutions, you can't create the atmosphere. Mums, I mean, if you know that, Sometimes you can't create the atmosphere. Your kid is on holiday now. You can't create the atmosphere anymore. Right? So what do you need to do? Detach from that and go and walk in nature. Go and have a look at the clouds. Go and have a look at a tree. Look at some flowers. Read a book. Listen to something. Get inspired by other people. And that gives you rest. And here's the thing, in all of these things, sometimes you're thinking, I'm just tired. But if you can't identify where you're tired, then the rest that you kind of fall back to in your default mode is not going to cut it for you. Then there's emotional rest. Emotional rest is needed when your feelings have been stretched. You know, there's some people that love emotional situations. They create drama, right? Right? Sometimes you're just in drama. Some people create drama. I've never understood people that watch horror films. Some people love watching horror films. I can't understand it. Because you're there like, ah, you know what I mean? Emotionally, you're like, your heart's going, dum, 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 dum. You know, someone walks in the room, you're like, oh. You go to bed and you're looking behind the curtains and under the bed before you get in, you're laying there with a cover over your head. Right? Your emotions are all over the place. That's, that's the scary stuff. What about the people that love watching emotional dramas on TV? I can't take it. There are certain people in my house that love watching emotional dramas. Are you with me? But there's some sort of emotional trauma that's taking place. I'm like, no, I don't want that. I can't have that. Just watching it sucks the life right out of me. I get emotionally drained. Some people thrive on that. But the thing is this, that sometimes your feelings get stretched and it tires you out. So what do you need to do in that is you need to be able to get with someone who's safe and offload and make sense of your feelings. You know, what am I feeling? Why am I feeling it? Where does that need to go? What can I do about that? And what you'll find is all of these things are interconnected. So sometimes it's just as simple as um, my body's tired because I've overdone it, so sleep. But sometimes if you're emotionally tired, your body can feel it as well. Not only is your heart and your soul stretched and tired, your mind is tired because it's part of your soul. Your body is tired because it's all connected and you're just knackered right across the board. But if you can identify the one piece, the one place that can do it for you, does this make sense? Then there's sensory rest. This is a big one. This is a huge one in this, throughout this pandemic. This is where you're just screened out, man. You go from your phone to your iPad, your tablet, to your computer, your laptop, to your TV screen. You're in your car looking at your sat-nav. You're just overloaded with all of this sensory stuff. And whether you know it or not, that's going to do something to you. Your eyes start getting tired. Your eyes tired, it tricks your brain into thinking that your body's tired. Hello? And then your mind's tired and you, get, you, get, you can't create nothing. And then your emotions get tired because you get frustrated. And, 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 and what you need to do is just shut the thing off. You know there's times now when I just sit in my house in silence. I don't have my phone, it's next to me, but it's on silent. My iPad is shut. The TV is turned off, there's no music, there's no sound. 
And for some people, that is the worst thing in the world. You know why? Because some of you are scared to be alone with your own thoughts. So you have all this sensory stuff, right? But how many of you know sometimes you've got to reset that? If you keep on your iPad or your phone for too long, sometimes it gets blocked. How many of you is, is ever locked up? Right? You can't flick the screen. You can't do nothing. It's just locked. I mean, if you've been on Zoom and you just, your Wi Fi's, something's happening and your Wi Fi's locked. And on screen, you're talking, but everyone else is, is, is gone still. And you're, you're still talking, but no one else can hear you. And all they can see is you going like this <laughs> in some unflattering place, some unflattering pose. Has that ever happened to anyone? I know it's happened to you because sometimes I take pictures of you on screen when you've done that. I have an archive full of them. I don't, obviously, for safeguarding purposes. But sometimes you've just got to reset that thing. And you have to do that with your senses, with your eyes, with your ears. Are you with me? Some of you, you have to reset your tongue. Because when you're tired, you can be negative. And I know when people are tired and there's something offset and something wrong and there needs to be some rest injected into them because how are you doing? Rubbish. How's your day been? Terrible. <laughs> you're looking good. No, I'm not. I love your hair. Why? Have you lost weight? I doubt it. Are you with me? So we need to reset our senses. Is this helping anyone? Is this making sense of anything? But then there's spiritual rest. This is the key to all of it. Spiritual rest is the most important rest of all. It's when you rest from your own productivity. That's what salvation is. Salvation is spiritual rest. We enter into the rest of God because we cease from our own works and we rely and trust on the finished work of the cross of Calvary through Jesus Christ. And that spiritual rest is so important. But sometimes people get spiritually tired because they take on things that they should let Jesus take care of. Or they just live in the flesh. They're just carnal. And Jesus is far away from them. And if you know, some people even take a rest from God in their thinking. But when you get that rest back, it's about reconnecting with the Savior. That's the way to rest spiritually. Take time to read his word. Take time to praise. Someone said to me, what's more important, the word of God or prayer? I said, what's more important, breathing in or breathing out? You need them both to survive. But sometimes people disconnect from God and then wonder why they're in the flesh. Wonder why they're living carnally. They wonder why spiritually they're tired and they can't be bothered. It's because you need to reconnect. Maybe take time to fast. Woo! Some of you need to fast, man. Why? Because then you're being disconnected from your flesh. You're putting your flesh back under manners. You're saying, no stomach. Be quiet. Remember our scripture? Verse 32 of our opening scripture, it says, so after he said, let's go and rest, he said, they left for a quiet place where they could be alone. But watch this, number two. Rest is for a specific period of time. It's not permanent. The problem is that we're addictive by nature, all of us. I'm not just talking about drugs, I'm not talking about you're born as an addict or anything, but you are born and become an addict, an addict to sin. We're all addicted to sin, doing our own thing, right? And sometimes what we want is when we get a good thing, we just want to keep doing it. Hello? But how many of you know, it, it might be good for, for a time, but it's not good forever. You can't sleep forever, even though sleep is good. 
You can't eat forever even though a meal is good. Things are for specific times. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 tells us there is a time for everything. And then it lists all of the different things that there is a time for. But here's the thing. There's a time for rest, but it's not all the time. It's good to disengage from work. It's healthy to focus on your own well-being for a time. But it's a temporary thing. You can't do that forever. There is a time to work. Laziness has no place in a Christian lifestyle. Amen? Laziness has no place in a Christian lifestyle. Someone once said, laziness is nothing more than the habit of resting before you get tired. And the thing about rest is, when it's effective, it's because it's a contrast to the other thing. And boundaries are really important when you're talking about rest. But the thing is, when I talk about boundaries, I'm assuming that we all have the same Christ-centered worldview. Some people have different worldviews. But when it's a Christ-centered worldview, what your worldview is, is that you belong to Christ, you live for Christ, you want to fulfill Christ's purposes, and in doing so, he's going to bless your life now and for eternity, right? That's our worldview, the Christ-centered worldview. So I assume that. So when I'm talking about boundaries, boundaries are really, really important. But boundaries are things that come alongside you on your journey to keep you focused on going forward to fulfill God's purposes and plan for your life. That's what boundaries are. They keep you from slipping off the narrow path. They keep you from slipping back onto the miry clay. They keep you from slipping into sin or falling over a cliff and destroying yourself. Boundaries are there to keep you moving in the right direction. They're not there to stop God from having any say in your life. Some people fall into the trap of putting blocks up against God and thinking that it's a boundary. Well, I've got to have a boundary of my time. It's my time. That's not God's time. Well, I'll give God a couple of hours on a Sunday, but the rest of the time's my time. No. No, that's not how it works. If you're born again, it's all God's time. It's like people, people do this with money, with giving. They're like, well, I've got my money. I've worked hard for it. I've earned it. I'm going to give it to where I want to give it if I want to give it. And I might, you know, 10% tithe. That's Old Testament stuff. I'm going to give whatever I want. And generally, when they've got that mindset, it's like 2%. It's never like, oh, 10% is an Old Testament thing under the law. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to give 30%. <laughs> I very rarely hear that when you've got that mindset. And they're going to give it out. But they have the mindset that the money's theirs. It's not your money. It's God's money. And if you tithe 10%, all, that's, all that means is God's allowed you to keep 90% of his money. But we put blockages up instead of boundaries. People cut their spiritual disciplines because they're tired. I'm too tired to pray. I'm too tired to study. I'm too tired to read. I'm too tired to go to church. What? I'm too tired to give. I'm too tired for Christian community. With that mindset, that mindset is not setting boundaries, it's empowering limitations. Because limitations will stop you from living God's will and your destiny. And I've found many, many people do this, especially in July, coming on into August, people get into holiday mode. Hello? I'm going on holiday. And what they mean is from everything. I'm going away, I'm taking two weeks off, that's it. That's two weeks off prayer, that's two weeks off fasting, that's two weeks off giving, that's two weeks off reading the Bible, that's two weeks off coming to church. And some people don't even come to church when the church can be on their phone. That's not the way it goes. That's not how you get rest. It might be how you get arrested, but it's not how you get rest. And then people wonder why they struggle in so many areas. They come back with a nice tan, but in the flesh and messed up in other areas. We've got to do better than this, guys. You've got permission to rest, but there's also these patterns of rest that can help you out so that you can rest in the right areas. And we need to start to get to understand them a little bit. Because you can't take a rest from God. Look at our scripture. Notice what Jesus told his disciples. He said, let us go 
and rest a while. See, he assumed the fact that rest is only found properly where it includes him. In the original Greek version, Jesus says, come away. It's in the imperative tense, which literally means it's important and it's immediate. And sometimes Jesus is going to tell you, disengage. Stop doing that one thing. Come away from that. And I mean, you know, sometimes he even comes in and stops you from doing some stuff. Right? Sometimes God allows things to happen. Why? To get you back on track. We don't like that. But it's for our well-being. There's been things that God has allowed in my life that I'm like, what on earth? Cancer and madness and attacks from the enemy. And I've spoken to God. I've said, God, what's happening? He said, you've got, to, you've got to accept what I allow, man. You've got to trust me. I know what I'm doing. Sometimes you just have to get away for a bit. But don't get away from him. Sometimes you've got to rest, but don't rest from God. Number three, when you're doing all of this and you're getting this rest, when you're getting relief from that situation or that feeling, you're getting refreshment in that area, rest prepares you for what's coming next. Remember what I said, that rest is for a season, you know, it's, it's not forever. I mean, if you know, work is going to come back. The thing is that as Christians, we are to do works. Faith without works is dead. But what are the works that we need to be doing? And how can we do them effectively? You can't do them if you're tired. You can't do them if you're dredging things up. You have to do them from a place of rest. I love the story of Elijah. There's a pivotal part that rest played in the fulfillment of his destiny. After he defeated the false prophets on Mount Carmel, you know the story, 1 Kings chapter 18 and 19, there's all the false prophets up there. He goes up there, he, he confronts them, he wants the people of God to know who is the God, is it Baal or is it Yahweh? He gets an offering, he, 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 he puts an oxen down on, on, on a, a, an altar, he gets them to dig, a big trench around it, right? There's been no rain. He gets them to go and get water, puts the water in the trench. He puts the water all over. Uh, you know the story, right? Puts the water all over the sacrifice. And he says, whoever answers by fire, that's God, right? And all the prophets, the false prophets are working themselves up, cutting themselves, slashing themselves, doing all sorts of madness, getting into a frenzy. Nothing's happening. Elijah starts mocking them. Where's your God? Maybe he's on the toilet. That's literally what it says. That, that, that's the context in, in the original language. Maybe he's, he's in the restroom, you know what I mean? Maybe he's, he's busy. Not listening to you. Cut yourself again, you sausage. You know what I mean? That's, you can imagine that's what he's saying. Nothing happens. And then all of a sudden, God, he calls upon God. Now I'm going to call upon God. And this is a beautiful scripture. Um, I've got it out of the West Indian translation. There's a scripture that says... Um, Fire came down from heaven and licked up the water in the trench. <laughs> massive, great big thing that he's done. He's just had this massive ministry high. But then what happens? The enemy comes in. Right? There's spiritual warfare. There is an enemy. There is an enemy. You never get by. If you're doing good things for God, expect there to be pushback. Right? It's okay. It's normal to have pushback. Don't be afraid of it. Don't run away from it. But understand how to deal with it. But then what happens is this. The king, Ahab, and the queen, Jezebel, they get, they get word to him that they're hunting him down now to kill him. They're going to kill him. Right? They're going to come and they're going to kill him. 1 Kings 19 tells us that Elijah is stressed and he's weary. And it says in verse 4, it says, Then he went on alone into the wilderness, traveling all day. He sat down under a solitary broom tree and he prayed that he might die. Have you ever been so tired mentally, emotionally, physically, 
spiritually, in a sensory capacity, creatively, that you just want it to end. Anyone? I've been there. I just want it to end. I can't deal with this anymore. I just want it to end. This was the prophet of God, the man of power for the hour, and boom, he was so exhausted that he just wanted it to end. He's isolated. He's exhausted. He's tired. He sat down under that tree and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life, for I am no better than my ancestors who have already died. Man, there comes a time when you've done good for God. But how many of you know, if you're still resting on what you did once before, then your life needs a, 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 a revamp, an upgrade. You need a, a fresh refreshing. It was good for then, but now is where it, 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 it's important. But he was in this mindset, I'm done, I've done it, I'm, 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 I've had enough, I can't do it anymore. He was tired, he was drained, and the enemy came after him. So he, he did the right thing. Verse 5 says, then he lay down and slept. Sometimes, you know, there's, there's nothing else to do but just go to bed. <laughs> just close your eyes, fold your hands, lay your head down and just zone out for a bit. Sometimes I've done that. Check this out. I've had the enemy breathe, literally breathing down my neck. I can smell his breath. Breathing on me, whispering threats. You're going to fail. Your church is going to fail. No one likes you. You're no good. You're going to fail. You're fat. You're ugly. You're going to fail. You're going to money. You're going to fail. You're going to fail. You're going to fail. Right? And he's literally there. And I'm like so stressed, so tired, so mangled. I'll just go to sleep. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm going for a snooze, man. And it's almost like the enemy's there going, meh, 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 and you just press snooze. Snooze. And I can imagine the enemy there going, what happened? And the man and the woman of God is just resting in the arms of the Lord. And you're just like, Jesus, I can't do this no more. I'm just going to have a kip, and I'm going to trust you that you're going to work it out. And the enemy's there going, And I'm sleeping like a teenager. Some of you know, don't ever, try, don't ever tell me you're sleeping like a baby. Because all that means is you've woke up four times in the middle of the night and wet yourself. <laughs> if you're going to sleep good, sleep like a teenager. They don't wake up for like 14 hours. <laughs> and then what's the enemy doing? I'm imagining the enemy like, <sighs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just there sleeping. And while you're sleeping, the, uh, the, the Lord is moving. Yes. Then he lay down and slept under the broom tree. But as he was sleeping, an angel touched him and told him, get up and eat. Not only do you sleep, it gets better. <laughs> Not only does God protect you when you're sleeping, he's preparing a meal for you when you wake up. Oh... A good sleep and some good food can change your world. And then look what happened. He went a kip. The enemy shut up, didn't know what was going on. Angel woke him up, give him something to eat. And then verse 7 and 8, he went back to sleep. Verse 6, he went back to sleep. He went back to sleep. He went to sleep again. <laughs> Everything now double, double, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Everything now double, double, oh. double, 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 double. He didn't just go to sleep once, he went to sleep twice. He didn't just give the enemy a left jab, he gave him a right hook. Because sometimes we need to rest from us. You need to, you know the saying, let go and let God. You've got permission to do that. But there's areas that you need to work out what to, when to do it and how. But he did that. Verse 7, it says, Then the angel of the Lord came again, touched him and said, Get up and eat some more. It gets even better. 
or the journey ahead will be too much for you. So basically he said to him, listen, rest, reset, recuperate, regenerate, be refreshed. Because from out of that is going to come what happens next. So he got up, ate and drank. And the food gave him enough strength to travel 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Sinai, the Mount of God. He went from defeated, wanting to quit, to resting. Remember? If you're tired, rest, don't quit. He rested. And that rest and the work of God in his life enabled him to get up and travel to where God was waiting. I love this. Always be ready for God to bless your rest. And then be prepared for the next thing that God is going to bring. Because you might think that it's over and out. You might think it's done and dusted. You might think that you've had enough, that you are done. Elijah was done. But how many of you know, when God has you in his hands, that might be the ending of something old that's going to release the beginning of something new. But you'll never know if you just keep dragging along in that tired old state. For Elijah, the next thing was that he was about to hear God again. He went up onto a mountain, there was an earthquake, there was a fire, there was all different types of things. There was all the ministry explosions, all the big stuff, all the things that we want and pray for, and God wasn't in that stuff. But God came like a still small voice and gave him his instructions. Get a successor, anoint a king, deal with your, your enemies. For the disciples of Jesus in our original scripture, they'd come from one bit of work, one bit of ministry, got some rest. But the next thing for them was that they were going to take part in a miracle of provision that was going to help thousands of people, the feeding of the 5,000. I'm telling you, something amazing is happening for you. Something amazing is happening for this church. We've been through a lot of warfare. We've been through a lot of stuff. We've done work. Me and my wife have been here 18 years. We've planted different churches. We've raised up different leaders. We've seen change come, reconciliation of families. We've seen drug addicts set free and saved. We've seen miracles take place. And then we've been through this time of enforced rest. That's what it seems like. But you've got to accept it. You've got to receive it. You've got to engage with it. You've got to actually activate it properly. Because God is preparing us for what's coming next. I don't know about you, but I want to be fully rested when the harvest comes. When the harvest rises up in the fields out there and we have to go out and reap the harvest, I don't want to be going out there with an aching back and tired limbs and a tired mind and a messed up heart. I want to be going out there... I want to be bowling out there going, come on, let's get that harvest. Come on, let's reach those people. Come on, let's welcome them newcomers. Is that your family? Praise God, we welcome you. It's great to see you. Not like, oh gosh, not another one. So guys, take some time. Rest. Recuperate. Disengage. From stuff that tires you. Don't rest from God. Don't rest from responsibility. You don't just go on a holiday and forget to pay your mortgage. Well, I'm going to go on a holiday, but that's the mortgage money. Well, don't worry about it. You know, we're going to have two weeks of fun in the sun. You're going to get back and you're going to have a lot more sun and rain because you ain't got a roof over your head. You wouldn't do that, would you? So don't do that spiritually either. Don't disengage from prayer because that's where true rest is. When you connect with the one who gave you rest. Don't rest from the Word because that's what fills you up. That's your nourishment. That's the food that the angel, like the angel was giving Elijah. 
That's the bread of heaven. And the living water that flows. Don't rest from your commitments to give. Don't rest from your commitments to prayer and stuff. And, but disengage from the things that suck you dry. It's okay. You got permission. Because there's a time coming when we got to get back in the harvest field. Take two things away for you, away with you today. There's two things you take away. It's this. You got permission to rest. Maybe you've never been given that before. You're getting it now. If you need it, rest. And then the other thing is, look at the patterns of rest. It might be you don't need to physically rest, but you need to rest your sensory areas of your brain. You might not need to rest the sensory areas of your brain, but you need to stop getting involved in a drama. Stop letting everyone's problem become your emergency. Whatever it is, get some rest. Because God's going to expect you to be ready when He calls you for the next season. Find the way that you need to rest and rest well until it's time to work again. Would you stand with me in this place? At home, online, wherever you are right now. Take a moment. We're going to connect with God in this moment. <sighs> Told you it's going to be a different message today. I want us to pray right now that we would find out where it is that we need to rest. Lift up your hands a moment and just surrender to God. Say, here I am, Lord. I know I'm tired, but show me where. Show me where. What do I need to break from? Do I need to rest from toxic situations? Do I need to rest physically just to go and have a sleep and a snooze? Do I just need to stop producing for a while and thinking that I'm the answer to everyone's problem? Do I just need to rest my brain and stop thinking for a bit? Lord, show me where I need to rest. Some of you need to rest from yourself. You know, that's a rest in itself, is a rest from the self. You know where you rest there? Go and serve someone else's needs. That gets you in line. So, Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would come and that you would bless our rest. Show us where it is that we need to rest. Even now, Holy Spirit, begin to do that work of separation, mind, separation of soul and spirit, the separation of joints and marrow. Your word tells us that rest is important. So God, I pray that that rest, that peace of God would come upon each and every one of us right now without excuse, without apology. Spirit of God, just move right now. Hallelujah. I want to make an altar call. I want to make an altar call. I want to pray for people today. I'm not going to lay hands on anyone. But I want you to come out of your seats and come and stand at the front in a nice distanced way. And I want to pray for you, if that's what you want.
This is the first altar call we've done in 18 months. Like this. And what it is, it's a response. This is a response to God. And what you're saying is this. You're saying, Lord, I want my next season to be fruitful. And so I'm responding to the permission for rest. And I'm asking you right now to help me to do it effectively. And I believe that God will answer your prayer and He will, and he will, he will, he will help you. He will show you how to rest. He will show you where to rest. Maybe you've been stuck on needing to rest in one way and God's saying you don't even need rest in that area. And the moment you unstick your thinking from that way of doing it and you actually get on to where God say it, says you need it, then all of a sudden your breakthrough is going to come. All of a sudden the rest is just going to flow through you. So Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, I pray for every single one of these men and women that have responded to you. Lord God, they've responded in faith and in their need to you, oh God, that you know exactly what they need and where. And they responded to you because in you is rest. And Lord God, you said that you would release rest to your people. Jesus said to come to Him if you're weary and heavy laden, if you're burdened, and He will give you rest. You've got to take off those things that have been driving you into the ground and take His yoke upon you. He wants to guide you and lead you. And you know the thing about the yoke is that it's not something that you just take on and pull. It's something that you share with Him. It might be that you have to give something to him now. Say, I've taken too much on board, Lord. I need your help. I've been stressing myself out because of this stuff, but I need your help. Lord, come and take the weight. Lift the burden. Help me, oh God. I humble myself before you. Come and lift my burden. Come and lift my burden right now. Come and help me. Help me with my decision making. Help me, oh God, with my work patterns. Help me in my thinking, oh God. Help me to disengage from things that are wearying me. Help me, oh God. Take that moment right now. Begin to cry out to God right where you're at. Begin to pray. Begin to speak to Him. If you're online right now, make an altar yourself in your house. Lift up your hands. Get on your knees. Lift up your hearts. Connecting with God is the first part of rest. But then He starts to show you the element, show you the area, show you the specifics. Some of you need to go and have a nap. Some of you need to just get away from draining people for a while. Some of you need to stop thinking so much. Some of you need to turn the TV off. Shut your phone, stop your Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook. And just be for a little bit. Some of you need to go out for a walk and look at a tree. Smell a flower. Some of you need to go to sleep, wake up, eat good food and go back to sleep. Some of you need to get around people because you ain't been around enough people and you're drained and you need people to help you out. Wherever it is, today is the day that we rest. This week, we're going to rest. You're going to rest. You're going to refresh. September is a new year. It's a new season. God has new plans. There are big things coming. There are new ministries for you. There are new positions that He wants you in. There are new people He wants you to reach. There are new plans that He has for you. There is a new start. But you can't start tired. Come on, let's worship the Lord for a minute. Then we're going to close the service. Because I don't want to drag this on. I want us to rest. I don't want us to work. I want us to rest. Lord, we rest in you. We worship you. We give you glory, oh God. We praise you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Come and do something new in our church and in our lives. 
Come and give us that reset that we need. Come and refresh us. Bring refreshing, oh God. Bring refreshing. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Oh, come on, pray, worship me. Oh, yes, you are. It don't work you if you don't work it. Even rest doesn't work if you don't do it. Strength like no other. Strength.
Hallelujah. I want you to do one last thing. I want you to take all that frustration and tiredness. I know you've got it. I felt it today. I want you to get it. And I want you to give it to God with a shout of triumph. That you know, wait, wait, wait. Release it. Release it to Him. Take your frustration, your tiredness, your stress, your worry, your anxiety. Take it. And I want you to fling it to Jesus. Cast your cares upon Him. For He cares for you. So on the count of three, I want you to just get it. Just do it. Just just do it. Just do it. Just get all your frustrations and all that. And when I say three, I want you to just shout Jesus and I want you to release it to Him. And I want you then to just let it go and I pray that there is going to be a release and there is going to be a release from that tiredness into a place of rest. And you're going to rest. You're going to recuperate. You're going to be refreshed. And God is going to get you right where you need to be got. Are you ready? All that stress, all that time, all that tiredness, all that pandemic stuff, all the lies of the enemy, all your fear, all your worry, all your doubt. Just get it all like it's in a ball. One, just get a hold of it right now. Grab it, grip it, don't let it go. Two, just hold on to it right now. And when I say three, I want you to give it to Jesus. Three, Jesus! Hallelujah. Come on, praise Him. Come on, praise Him. Praise Him. It's okay. So, Father, I pray you bless everyone today with your rest. May the Lord bless you and may He keep you. And may the Lord make His face to shine upon you. May He turn His countenance towards you and look upon you and give you rest and peace in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God bless you. Did you receive that today? Yes. Then go and rest because we're expecting some rested people at the end of this month. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you online. Thank you, everyone. And uh, don't forget, we have a picnic. So just bring what you can. But just come and fellowship. Come and sleep under a tree. I mean, if you know, there's something about sleeping under a tree after you've eaten some chicken. Amen. Come and walk around. Come and breathe the air.